Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Molly Pope Art. Thank you for joining me in on this new tu Zinnia tutorial. Um, this is painted three quarters of the way, already finished, um, and I did that so that you can see the finished areas as I'm painting the remainder of the other elements in the design. I hope by doing the tutorial this way that it will kind of make a little bit more sense to you um, what I'm doing and why. And if it doesn't, please let me know. So the first step in painting your petals is to base coat them with a wash of a cadmium yellow medium. This is a kind of a bright golden yellow. There's my reference photo. And um, you're going to base coat those petals first with the cadmium yellow. And I've gone ahead and done that with all of the petals that are in the um, back area and let them kind of dry down a little bit. So uh, to start, you're going to be doing a thin wash of vermilion over top of that yellow. Vermilion is a red-orange color, and you can mix up your own red-orange if you don't have that particular color. But just keep in mind, it is a red-orange shade of orange. Um, so what you're going to be doing is you're going to be adding a wash of that vermilion over the top. So, And in doing a wash, that means it's a very, really watery um, application of paint, sort of an ink consistency. In that way you can kind of see the yellow it will shine through um, that orange um, wash. And the next thing you're going to do is you're going to apply a red, a cadmium medium red is the color that I'm using, and you're going to apply that around the edges of the front petals um, where they overlap and you're going to sort of smoothly blending those out into the orange color um, And this will help to add a shadow um, color it deepens the shadows and uh, It'll really sort of help those petals that are in the back side It'll push them back into the distance by adding that deeper color um, And it'll help the petals that are in the front area to sort of pop them out as well um, you also want your petals that are towards the center of the flower to look like they are actually growing up out of the center and that center is sort of recessed down. So you want those petals that are around the middle of the flower to also to appear um, like they are down a little bit further. So we want that color around the center to be a little bit deeper. So and now I'm going back and adding that first layer of vermilion uh, wash over those petals that are in the very front and you can kind of see it will you'll still be able to see that yellow sort of shining through that orange color now what you're going to be doing is begin to add highlights to those petals um, towards the very top is where those highlights need to go and i mixed um, a little bit of the orange with the tiniest amount of white just to kind of get the very upper edges of those petals um, and here i needed to refine the overlap area of those um, petals a little bit more so i just went in with my little fine liner brush and add a little bit more red where those petals overlap. So um, back to highlighting now. Again, you're going to mix up a little bit of titanium white into your orange, and you can even add a little bit of yellow um, for your highlight color, and you're gonna add that where the petals are sort of at the very tips, where they would be turning back towards maybe the light, if the light is coming from the upper left-hand side. Um, that's where those tips and those edges of those petals, where they start to kind of round a little bit, that's where you wanna add your highlight areas. So what you wanna keep in mind when you're painting is you need to have, like each petal specifically is going to have a, um, a mid-range color, um, it will have a shadow color, which is deeper, and then you will have a highlight color, which is brighter and lighter. You need at least those three shades on each petal to give realistic effects to your painting. 
Um, and that goes for any subject that you are painting. You need at least three shades. Um, so keep that in mind. You need a mid-range, um, a shadow color, and a highlight color, whatever it is you're painting. And that will help to give you more realistic effects um, to what it is you are painting. And I'm just going back over and refining the separate um, the areas where the the petals sort of overlap each other and just sort of adding a little bit more depth to those areas by using the liner brush with it with a deeper color. And um, so this right now I'm working on the upper left hand side of the middle of that that zinnia flower. Um, you can see where I've already finished the front half. And um, so that mix for that area is really, really deep. So that is a cadmium red mixed with burnt umber. And that gets applied around the um, middle upper area of the flower. And then as you work towards the middle of that um, center of the flower, you're going to use more of the cadmium red. So that will already sort of build in some dimension to that area of the flower. You're going to have the outer color be deeper The as the area of the zinnia, the middle would sort of round towards the middle. You, you would have brighter light hitting it. So that's where you want more of the true red to be. And then again, as it sort of rounds down into the center of the flower, um, towards the middle where you've got that really deep center which is mainly a black and burnt umber with a little bit of mixed red um, with a little bit of red mixed in there um, you want that sort of to kind of be a little bit deeper also Now that upper area of the center of the flower to get it to appear to have some a little bit stronger highlight and the center of the zener, zinnia looks like it has little hairs or little fibers that all turn towards the middle of the flower. Um, you want to add a little bit of pink to your red so you can see in this video where it really starts to show that brighter color that more of a highlight color towards the middle of the flower. So then what I did is I went back and I added um, some more full strength little dots of the cadmium red over that highlighted area. It really sorts of adds, sort of adds a really nice bright effect. You're not 100% covering the pink that you just added as a highlight color, but just sort of adding some of that bright red over the top. It'll really help to make that um, center pop out. And so I'm beginning to paint the florets that go around the center of a zinnia. And um, they're basically they're yellow. However, yellow is very sheer. And to go over these deep dark colors of the oranges and the reds, um, it really would not show up. It would take many, many coats of yellow to sort of get it to cover. And so what I've done is I've used just straight titanium white um, and made um, the, painted the little florets with the titanium white first. That way, titanium white covers really well. It's very opaque. And this way, the yellow um, gets applied over the top of the titanium white after it dries down. And so it provides a nice base for that yellow then to really pop over the white.
I will add a drawing to my Pinterest page, Molly M. Pope, uh, a free drawing. You can go and you can download that drawing and you can print it out uh, and follow along with me with this painting. And so again, the leaves and the stems were painted the same way that I did the flower with most of the majority of them already painted um, so that you could kind of see the finished um, you know, flower and or leaves and stem and then sort of follow along with me. So the base coat that I used for the leaves and the stems was a mixture of uh, hooker's green mixed with a burnt umber. It makes a really beautiful lifelike mixture of green um, rather than using, try to using paint straight out of the tube. It doesn't look very realistic and since we're going for a somewhat of a realistic look, um, I like to use that mix of burnt umber and hooker's green for a lot of my greenery that I'm painting um, in botanical work. And then the highlight color on this little leaf to the left is a mixture of a medium olive green. Um, and I'll still mix a little bit of the hooker's green in with that. Um, it makes a really bright, uh, light, springy color of green, more tinged on the yellow side. And that just gets added, not over the whole leaf, it just gets added where that leaf is kind of cupping up and over. You can see the leaf to the left that I painted where I painted it more in sections. So you can do your leaves either way. Uh, neither way is wrong or neither way is better than the other. They're just painted differently. So you can see two different versions of how to paint your leaves. So the stems again were painted with those same colors um, and you wanna leave that really deep dark green under the head of the uh, zinnia flower, like where the petals would be overlapping the stem. And the stem, if you look at a zinnia stem, um, you'll see that there's sort of, uh, looks like it's done in stripes. It's not necessarily done in stripes, it's just there's little, um, hairs that are over the top um, and the stem sort of looks like it has sections to it um, but vertically so I painted the stems vertically all my lighter green was painted you know kind of straight up and down it follows the curve of the stem of that zinnia how I drew it um, I always try to give my stems that I'm drawing on flowers a little bit of a curve they look a little bit more realistic so you'll have to build up layers in your painting with the lighter green and just sort of um, adding them exactly like you've done with the leaves and the stems, just kind of hitting where maybe the sunlight would hit. So this tutorial is just about um, concluded. I really hope you enjoy this. Thank you so much for watching along and um, I hope you give this painting a try. Um, if you liked this painting, you learned something, please like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day.